bitches falling down. Cause 500 is going to go in the neck. So, you know, my ass can only take so much. You're right. <laughs> Up that ass! Come on. Hock work, hock work, hock work, hock work. Up yeah! Kick it! Alright, let's get it! Get it! This can only take so much. Fit, <laughs> fit. Come on. Hock work, hock work, hock work, hock work. The Eagles are trying to. Uh, did I just say what I think I. <laughs> uh, did. Pause! No dick! Hmm. Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. And it is Sunday. It is 9.30 in the morning, and we are getting ready to watch some football. I couldn't be any more excited than I already am right now. Just cannot wait to get this party started. So this is a crucial week for uh, the Cowboys, and this is going to be an interesting week with a couple of games that are going on today. Of course, we have uh, the Eagles, surprisingly, the Eagles, um, with the Commanders, they flipped those games. They made the Eagles a 1 o'clock kickoff instead of a 4 o'clock going against Cincinnati, um, a game which I guess people have kind of looked at Cincinnati and said they're kind of a disappointment for where they thought they would be and don't think it's as big a game as it could be. Although Cincinnati, if I do check my betting, let, let me check the numbers here, the final bet US, bet US line on that game. Um, I know that the Eagles were two and a half point underdogs. Let's see. Let's double check this. Tennessee, Detroit, Baltimore, Cleveland, Green Bay, Jacksonville, Indianapolis, Houston, Arizona, Miami, Atlanta, Tampa Bay. Washington is a one point underdog. Um, why am I not seeing the Eagles, Cincinnati? Hmm. Tennessee, Detroit, Tennessee, 11 and a half point underdogs, Baltimore, Cleveland, Jacksonville, Pack, uh, Indianapolis, Houston, Texans, Arizona Cardinals, Miami Dolphins, Atlanta Falcons, Tampa Bay, hmm. um, Chicago, Washington, New York Jets, New England, Buffalo Bills, Seattle, Ah, oh, there it is. Two-point underdogs for the uh, road team, Philadelphia Eagles. And that's a game that we, we're all definitely Cincinnati fans with um, wanting the Eagles to lose. Of course, Washington is a uh, one-point underdog going against the Bears. Um, we're not sure if Daniels is going to play. They're hopeful that he can play uh, with the sore ribs and things, and we'll see that one. That one is really big. We are definitely Cincinnati and Chicago Bear fans today because we do not want Washington to keep running away. We don't want them to get to 6-2 and two, um, right there. Also, another key game here, surprisingly, is Tampa Bay 4-3 and three, going against the Atlanta Falcons 4-3, and three, knowing that we have to play the Atlanta Falcons next week. That's a crucial game for us uh, to see what's what and who's who on it. So definitely going to be checking that one out as well. Um, keeping an eye on that because that's our next opponent. Of course, our Cowboys going against a depleted um, 49ers game. Then this is kind of funny because the Cowboys and the 49ers have met uh, twice in the playoffs. You know, chance to get keep advancing and going to the Super Bowl. Right now, the two of us are basically fighting... A must-win situation where you know San Francisco surprisingly is three and four. Um, they have been hit by injuries all this season. Uh, Christian McCaffrey has yet to play a game yet this year. Brandon Ayuk is lost for the year. Uh, Debo Samuel's was in the hospital as of Tuesday with pneumonia, um, and Brock Purdy has come back down to earth from a 113 to about a 91 quarterback rating with having so many of his weapons not there functioning for him. So it will be an interesting game to see how well they actually do play. Now, for me, for me, 
our team is beat up just as bad. But I feel like there should be a sense of urgency. A couple of things that I think might make a difference. Let's be clear here. History proves that every time that the Dallas Cowboys have taken their time getting a contract done for no other reason other than publicity, they didn't save any money on C.D. Lamb's contract. They kept the drama going all the way two weeks before the season started, missing all of training camp. And that, my friends, definitely hamstrung C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb is not in football shape the way he should have been to start the season. And the timing between Dak and C.D. has not been there. And this is critical. You know, we have some nice pieces that are developing that may end up being really good players and going ahead in future, but the team is so young. You need somebody who's going to be a game breaker to really get this thing going. And thus far, CD has not been able to do that. You can see miscommunication between Dak and him. You can see maybe he's been tired and maybe that's why the roots have been lazy where he's trying to save it when he knows the ball's going his way. For whatever reason, it needed some more time. It needed some more baking to get done. And that's on Jerry Jones for not getting this thing done. We have constantly, it, it, it drives me crazy because the Cowboys didn't save any money on Zeke Elliott's. They didn't save any money on Tank Lawrence's. They didn't save any on C.D. Lamb. They didn't save any on Dak Prescott. And it took them all off season into training camps to get these things done. Except for D-Law. But D-Law waited to get his shoulder operated on, which carried through in the season. And what we've seen happen every single time, with exception of Dak, is you've seen the play of that player take a major step back the next year. Now, let's hope that this is um, by week 2.0 last year. You could look and say the first half, excuse me, the first five, six games of the season our offense left us wanting a whole lot more where the fact we had people saying, we need to get Kellen Moore. We screwed up getting rid of that guy. Well, maybe, just maybe, the bye week is a chance that the Cowboys can coalesce, they can get some extra work in, and that they're actually ready to come out refocused to go ahead and go through the rest of the season. And it seems like CD, with his interview with Jason Garrett, seems to be on that path and on that trajectory. The second thing I think is going to be interesting is Dalvin Cook. That's our wild card right now because we don't know what we have with Dalvin Cook. Maybe Dalvin Cook, I mean, this is the hopeful side of me saying maybe Dalvin Cook, they knew he was going to be better than what we think he's going to be, and they were saving the debut for now to try and start a drive and get going. One of the problems for our Cowboys have been is running the football. People don't seem to understand there's a cause and effect with running football. When you have a young offensive line, the easier thing to do is to run block. It just is. It's more aggressive. It's using the physicality of the players. When you are constantly in pass blocking and a defensive lineman, an edge rusher, knows that you have to pass, they, they're, they're putting their ear, folding their ears back. They're getting up on, the, on their high horse, and they're coming like a raging bull. And that's harder. If Dalvin Cook can have us having a semblance, doesn't have to be, you know, uh, a 200-yard game. If we can just turn up four, four and a half yards a carry, you will see a major difference on this offense that will be able to open it up. And make no mistake about it, in my mind, the Cowboys are going to have to score. They're going to have to keep scoring. San Francisco is going to want to run the football. Uh, Debo, of course, is back. But, you know, with pneumonia, you don't know how long before he gets winded. And without Ayuk taking up some of that attention. And then there's Kittle, who's got a bad foot. They're definitely going to be hamstrung on the passing attack. And they're going to be going against the Dallas Cowboys' biggest weakness, which is stopping the run. We do get Eric Kendricks back. Uh, we do get Carson back, which will help some. And um, Martez Lazufu should be back as well. So we may be a, in a better position than we were two weeks ago going against the Lions, which was completely a buzzsaw. So not a whole lot I need to do this morning before we get ready. 
Um, well, I got to get some food cooking and things like that because we'll be live streaming all day long, starting with the Eagles game, following along with that, and of course the Tampa Bay Atlanta Falcons game, followed by the Washington uh, versus the Bears at four, and we'll roll right into Sunday night football. So it's going to be a long day. I do want to go to 105.3 The Fan. Uh, whose popularity has definitely gone up since Jerry Jones, of course, uh, threatened to fire Sean and RJ. Um, but they have Mark Sareth. Mark Sareth, former uh, Washington Redskin, now Commanders, and um, Denver Bronco, offensive lineman, was on 105.3 The Fan and giving you kind of a preview of the game. And, you know, he's he is a great underrated analyst. Uh, as opposed to uh, Dan Orlowski, he really knows what he's talking about. Had a very eventful week here at the fan. Uh, you know, I think the uh, the big question right now is: are, are the Niners banged up enough? Like, how bad are they? Could the Cowboys actually beat them? Hey, yeah, I mean that's a great question, and I don't know who's going to be available. Um, you know, Jawan Jennings comes back; he had a hip injury. I don't know where. Debo, it doesn't feel like he's in the in the hospital right now with some form of pneumonia, so it doesn't sound like he's going to be clear to play. Obviously, they're trying to get Christian McCaffrey back after the bye week, but you know the the big thing that you would lean on, obviously, if you're a Niners fan or um, you know if if you're Kyle Shanahan, is we got to get our run game going. Dallas has been a sieve when they played against really good run teams, so can we get that run game going and can we create some play action with some of our young wide receivers, some of our young players? Uh, to have some success in that, you know, in that fashion or in that in that aspect of our of our offensive game plan, but uh, yeah, the Niners are beat to a pulp. There's no question about it. Can the Cowboys run against them like the, like the Chiefs uh, got loose on uh, the other night? Yeah, uh, probably not. I mean, you know, again, like nothing, like nothing. You always look at kind of what what comes out of the bye week, right? What can you do in the bye week and you know, there used to be a time like when, when back in my day where the bye week was like, go back to training camp practices. Let's work on the crap we haven't worked on. Let's work on the stuff that, you know, that we need to get better at. Let's work on technique. Let's work on all the different things, the nuance of blocking and some of the schemes that we're lacking in and stuff. And you just don't do that in today's game, right? I mean, you just don't, you don't put on full pads and go beat each other up and, and try to get better at that stuff. So, um, you're not doing that. You haven't changed personnel last time I checked. So no, you still, you know, lack the personnel and the execution of that personnel to be, you know, to be significantly better. Can you get better? Certainly. Can you have a little bit better technique on some things? Absolutely. But, uh, you know, the, the, the issue with the game to me is you don't work on those things. So I always, like, it, it's funny. I was at a game, um, calling a game in Detroit uh, a year ago and, and just bumped into Roger Goodell and he talked about, hey, what are we going to do to protect the quarterbacks and how are we going to, you know, fix this quarterback injury situations that we have right now? And, you know, my response to him was, you got to practice. You, like, running the football is a, that's a skill. Like, I always say, I always say, like, like offensive line is the most skilled position in football. It always pisses me off when people talk about oh, skill position players. Really? Mm-hmm. Like really? Because because I can I can line up and you know a week ago out and play catch. I could throw a football to you and you could throw it back to me. If we did one on ones, I'd whip your ass. Yeah. Like you're, there's no way like you're going to be able to compete with me in that because there's a skill. And then you talk about offensive line and the run game in general. Um, collectively, we're the worst athletes on the football field. And we're expected to, you know, we're always playing against a guy who's a better athlete than us. And we're expected to win 100% of the battles. And if I give up one sack or I make one bad play, you know, I I can whip your ass for 65 plays in a row. If I give up one sack, you go to the Pro Bowl and and I'm a piece of garbage. Mm -hmm. So there's an unbelievable skill involved in running the football. There's an unbelievable skill involved in protecting against guys who are better athletes than us. And ultimately, we no longer work on it. So we go out there and say, hey, man, make sure you block these guys. Say, but we're not going to actually you know, work on the fit. We're not actually going to come off the ball. We're not actually going to do the things that are required to be really good at that when you're a lesser athlete. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, is, it is mind-boggling to me. Um, and a lot of the things that we do as a league in general, it's the unintended consequences of stupidity. 
Like we take all these things out to make the game safer, to make the game this or make the game this, or we think we're going to avoid injuries. And ultimately, the game gets worse and more yeah. guys get hurt because they're not as skilled as they used to be. So practice yeah, I know I'm an old guy standing on you know the porch yelling at clouds, but that has a lot to do with the um, with some of the you know just some of the the bad play that is out there and the bad execution that is out there right now as, as we watch this product. It's Mark Schlereth with you, uh, and you yelling at clouds is some great content, uh, Mark. We absolutely <laughs> love your, your football wisdom. The Insider Call is brought to you by Hellman's Real Mayonnaise. You can purchase Hellman's at your local Walmart, Kroger, or grocery store to add extra deliciousness and creamy flavor to your game day dishes this football season. Sting, I saw breakfast ball. Uh, you you kind of gave your colleagues there at FS1 some, some love when it came to you're never picking the 49ers to beat the Chiefs again as long as they've got Reed and Mahomes. But <laughs> how much credit does Steve Spagnuolo need to get when it comes to that as well never been beaten by one of those shanahan offenses we we talked to you about this a few weeks ago defensively what is it the chiefs are doing to just give the 49ers so many fits yeah they they are really i mean they are really good and they're playing exceptional football and you know i mean ultimately they're 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 defending the run they've got a couple of guys that are really stout um I think they play with an aggressiveness, downhill aggressiveness. I, I, you know, Spagnuolo's just got them coached up, and they read it, they understand what they're looking at, and then they've got some guys on the outside that can play man-to-man. And so they get to the point where they're like, hey, man, we're going to commit guys to the run game. We understand this run game. I think they do a really good job of not getting off their marks, not mm-hmm. getting out of their gaps. And so – Part of the beauty of the Shanahan offense, when you look at what Shanahan does, what Mike McDaniels does in Miami, I'm studying the Miami game right now because I've got that this weekend. Or you look at LaFleur with all the motions and the shifts and the different ways to attack an edge, they they just basically get leverage and they get kind of position on you with those motions. And I think Kansas City does a really good job of not overreacting to that stuff and understanding like the scheme and what they're doing. And, you know, one of the ways, and I always look at kind of the edge and how they do this with personnel, like you can line up on the edge and let's just call it 18 handoff. Mm -hmm. And you can block 18 handoff. You can get in two tights west, right? And you can block that edge with those two tight ends. And, you know, you can roll off to a safety that's rolled down, right? And you you can block it that way. Or you can keep a tight end out there. You can arc release that tight end make it look like you're blocking that defensive end, and then have a fullback load him, right? So that's it's still 18 handoff, but now you've blocked that edge two different ways. Now I can get on that edge without a fullback, and I can get tight end to tackle to block that guy. And so we're still running 18 handoff, but now it's a whole different look that you're looking at as that defensive end. So I just gave you one play 18 handoff, and I give you three different ways to block that defense. And then I can come up with another three just as sure as I'm sitting here um, in two seconds. And ultimately, that defensive end now has defended one play, but he's defended six different schemes against mm-hmm. him. And so for a defense, it looks like six different separate different plays, especially to the edge of that defense. But for the offense, two guys exchange what they're doing. And ultimately, nine guys are doing the exact same thing they do every time you call 18 handoff. So it makes it really confusing to the edge of that defense on what this play is, how am I getting blocked, and ultimately, how many times are you going to run that in a game? Five or six? Well, I just blocked it five different ways or six different ways. So it really becomes it becomes one of those things that for an offense is pretty easy, but for a defense, it really it's really confusing, and it really looks weird. And ultimately... Kansas City does a really good job of not of not having bad eyes in those situations. Mm-hmm. And then, because they do such a good job, they make San Francisco play a drop-back game. And that's not what San Francisco's good at. They're just not really a drop-back team. They're a run-the-ball-first team, set up the hard run-action, play-action off of that, and occasionally some play-pass stuff, which is the deeper seven-step drops where you're keeping six, seven, eight guys in and running two-man routes. So... That's what they do exceptionally well, and maybe it's just because they've seen a lot. Um, you know, Spag sees it um, within his own division or has seen it within his division, but the guy is just really exceptional at getting his players to play fast and hard and, um, and, and just really smart football is the biggest thing. 
Hey, Mark, uh, what locker room reaction would you have had as a player if your head coach called you soft in a press conference? Yeah, that is the dirtiest four-letter word in football. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a difference, I think, you know, when you talk about uh, Gerard Mayo, there's a difference between saying we play soft and then calling me soft, right? right? Calling me soft is, those are fighting words. And, hey, we played soft today. That There's a difference because, um, like, as much as that pains me to hear and as much as it, uh, you know, pains me to even think about, um, there's some games where I've, there's some games certainly where as an offense and even individually, um, like, I played soft. I wasn't, I wasn't what I wanted to be. And, like, those are the films, when you see those films, um, those are the films that you just want to destroy. Can we bury that in a pit and never bring it back up? I don't ever want to see that again. It's embarrassing. So um, those, are the, those are things, man, that really hurt you as a player. So, um, but the bottom line as a player also, is it true? Like, I always yeah. think about it from that standpoint. Is it true? Mm-hmm. Did we play soft? Mm-hmm. And um, I remember saying it on the radio in Denver years ago, um, and uh, I got a phone call from Derek Wolf, who was a great player for the Broncos. And, you know, I was doing radio. He was playing. So, the uh, you know, it's right after the whole, the, the whole no-fly zone. You know, it's a couple of years later, and after like a year or two, two years after they won the Super Bowl. And I called them. I called their defense soft on the radio, and he was livid. You know, I got a call from him, and I was like, "Let me just ask you a question. You guys gave up 220 yards. A great day. You got 220 yards on the ground, 220 yards rushing." And I go, "I don't know what you call that, but in my day, we called that soft, mm. right?" Yeah. And ultimately, mm-hmm. you know, like we're yeah. we're tight, but he was mad. But I was like, "Dude, is it true?" Did you guys play – like, did you guys get run through? Yeah. And, you know, ultimately you can't defend it, right? And mm-hmm. so if it's true and you played collectively, you played soft, well, then guess what? Um, the truth hurts, and you got to wear that damn thing, and then you got to go out and correct it. There you yeah, go. go fix it. Well said, Mark. Appreciate your thoughts. Enjoy. All right. So the question is, will the Dallas Cowboys defense play soft today, or will they man the F up? and take out some vengeance on it. Let's be clear here. This game is huge. This is a game that could set you up for the rest of the season, or it could end up being the demise for the rest of the year. I don't know which way it's going to go. Um, we'll have my dad's picks a little bit later. I'm going to go down here, get making some clam chowder for the day, and uh, we're going to be doing the corned beef sub. I, you know, I know it's got nothing to do with, with uh, San Francisco, or really the Cowboys, but we're going to do, I'm going to try and do something a little different um, with it. I'm going to try some different toppings or something or other, but the corned beef has been undefeated this year, and so until it gets defeated, we're going to run with it. As always, you know I appreciate you guys. Peace out.